the show's on. It is. It is. Welcome to Extemper Radio. My name is Jason Evans, and I am the producer of this show. The things you will hear over the next hour represent the views of Extemper Radio and the people making them. All opinions and quotations. Is that what it is? Yeah. In no way represent River West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. Hmm. So take that, suckers. Yeah. That's uh, Jason Evans with you here tonight. I'm Brendan O'Day. Joining us tonight is uh, our uh, uh, most recent third wheel. Uh, it's my, uh, <laughs> Nate Ford. Hello, everybody. Is in the house as we uh, prepare to embark on the insanity that will be the uh, the Hobbit Trail. All right. A misguided tour of comedy, <laughs> a misguided comedy right. tour. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be misguided, all right. It'll be very <laughs> misguided. Uh, joining us on the program tonight is going to be Aaron Imholt from uh, Minnesota, from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Aaron is a uh, is a uh, radio disc jockey. He is a host of a radio talk show and a radio podcast or a uh, webcast, a uh, live cast. And he is also the host of um, the comedy show at Benton Station in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. He's, uh, he's probably one of the best hosts we've run into at these outlying clubs in a long time. It's not like bringing your own comedian host with you. Yeah. yeah. He's really funny. He, uh, he writes unbelievably well. Uh, about 90% of the jokes that he told at the show we did two weeks ago now, uh, a week and a half ago, were, with, they were within 24 hours. Yeah. 10% oh, wow. were about three days old. But the other 90% were news stories Jeez. from that, like that news cycle, that 24 I cycle. Like that. I know. It's just fabulous and, output. And that's um, great because you almost have to, especially if you're going to host every week. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You know. yeah. And that's the thing is, it's a weekly comedy show. So uh, you're going to see a lot of the same people. But you can find Aaron at the Aaron at AaronImholtShow.com. That's A A R O N I M H O L T E S H O E. Uh, S-H-O-W, sorry, at dot com. And uh, that is in the afternoons. Uh, no, I take that back. Aaron is on live in the afternoons at KLFD in, uh, in uh, what's it called? What's that place called? St. Cloud, Minnesota. Wow, I just completely <laughs> blanked. That's Sock crazy. Sock Rapids. Sock Rapids. Rapids. No, no. Cloud? It will be St. Cloud, right? It'll be St. No, I guess no. it's Sock Rapids. Yeah. Well, that's the suburb, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the suburb. So, anyhow, uh, we've had a uh, we've had an interesting uh, weekend and uh, interesting comedy stuff going on. What's uh, what's uh, what's been happening with you there, Mr. I uh, Mr. Evans? I have a boring life. Yeah. I've been working and being a dad to my family. Oh. It's, it's atrocious. It's really boring. Nothing exciting has been going on. In my life, no, f- not even a flat tire or nothing, not even, <laughs> not even a shootout or nothing. Just well, the night is still young. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Hope so. Jeez, someone shoot at me or something. I don't know. Not much. But you guys sound like you had an exciting time. You guys are living the dream. It's a weird thing. Uh, on uh, Saturday morning, uh, I was attending to typical. Uh, landlord tenant or property management type duties and fixing some things at one of the properties and about uh oh somewhere around 12 15 or so mm-hmm. i get a text message from nate ford uh asking if i if, uh, if we if we're available to go to michigan to the up that night uh the fine folks at the yoder organization had contacted mr ford and asked Funny him business. to uh fill in uh we try not to promote them because oh, they're not really you know they're not great you come on the show <laughs> yeah we had uh we had uh we had mr eric yoder on the show Sent, we s- suck lantern on him stuck lantern well on him. <laughs> sicked him on him sicked was pretty him pretty good him, yeah. <laughs> uh but uh you know it, it'd be one thing you know if he just came on and was like straight up and basically a lot of things he said to us is just is not how what he does yeah. in practice so you know whatever uh you know it, people want to put they think that they're i don't know if he thought other people than comedians were going to ever listen to this show and and he feels like he has to try and keep some type of persona going that does or doesn't apply but whatever so regardless uh but so it was a it was a yoder gig and uh, at a casino at the ojibwa casino in uh Baraga, michigan 
And Mr. Ford and I drove up there at the last minute, left about uh, 12.39. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in town in under five hours and 10 minutes. I think we just cut it in wow. under 5.10, which is pretty amazing. Two stops. Two stops. And, and I had to stop twice, yeah, because it was just like, uh, I don't know, it was just kind of a weird thing. We were, we were getting gas and, and uh, like, just spaced out. Hey, I'd like to go inside and just, you know, whatever, get something to drink, use the facilities. And, and all of a sudden, we were on the road again, and it's like, yeah, I think we should probably stop. <laughs> Not going to make it the remaining three and a half hours that we had to drive. And so we got up there, and it was a crazy weird gig, uh, 300 or so people. Um, it was the casino. It was the government employees of the reservation. Uh-huh. So it was uh, an interesting crowd. Uh self-described by people in attendance as not very bright wow <laughs> um that's amazing. lacking a sense of humor and uh and um uh and generally uh, uh generally lazy lackluster people did you find that to be true all three um no, i wouldn't say that I, they no? were they were they, we've had some gigs recently where it's been like okay i'm gonna this joke's just for you and this one's yeah. for you and this oh, one's yeah. for you it's like the one at but, a time yeah and and, yeah. and if there was any momentum it was immediately quashed with just <sighs> you know, so it's, ah, yeah and just that up and down kind of moment of laughter and then go it goes away so uh so that's unfortunate um but that's the way that goes uh sometimes and um uh so we left that gig uh, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, actually, and, uh, and tried to get back to Milwaukee, and we caught a snowstorm, and we wound up in a ditch, and then we had something happen that was magic. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it yeah. was magical. An yes. angel came I down mean, and got you out magical. of the ditch? It was pretty much an angel. It, yeah. uh, it's wow. pretty much an angel named John. From Ramirez Towing Service. Ramirez Towing. Remember that. And Ramirez Manitowoc, Towing in Manitowoc, Manitowoc yeah. Wisconsin. I didn't know the angels were named John. Oh, good. Well, I guess one of them was. You know, yeah. had a book in the Bible and everything. So <laughs> That's true. Yeah. There was That's that true. one that did pretty well. Ramir- you know, represent. Ramirez, though. <laughs> or you know. John the yeah. Baptist yeah. or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, so, you're, you guys are really biblical. Wow. So this dude. Uh, so uh We're on the phone. We've, we've, we've gone in. We've done some internet searching, looking for a towing service. It's very frustrating. According to Yellow Pages, there's not a single business uh, in the entire city of Tow Rivers that offers towing service. And I find that hard to believe. I just think that uh, there are so many people are on cell phones that they don't yeah, wind up ridiculous. in the Yellow Pages anymore. So we couldn't find anything, and I just didn't want to get the next city away. So they're kind of sister cities, but it's still another. you got to cross another town, you know? Yeah. And so... We we're just pounding through different sources trying to find it, and finally just fine. Let's just so Nate calls four one one, and the first one that comes up is and she even had this tone in her voice at the at the four one one operator was kind of like Ramirez towing like you're gonna call the Mexicans out in a snowstorm to come come yeah. get you and, uh, and I'm like yeah that's the one we're calling Ramirez yeah, they'll yeah. come so we grab Ramirez we call John uh, the the some other guy answers the phone first and then and I was speaking too fast in English and he wasn't able to keep up so he hands the phone off to this John guy and uh, and John's like uh, he's like where are you and I said we're County Highway B and I give him the name of the two roads that were between between yeah. he's like, I know exactly where you are you're just north of 310 just north of the mobile station i'll be there uh, tw- uh 15 to 20 minutes we were out of the ditch and back up on the road in under 20 minutes wow nice a towing service said they would show up mm-hmm. <laughs> did so in less time than they claimed they would yeah. and we were done with the whole service in under the time it wow. took wow guy was amazing and, and we, just amazing the best part is we told him that we were uh, comics on our way to uh, milwaukee and without Usually, you know, sometimes you say that to somebody, people, in the, and they'll say, hey, tell me a joke. Yeah, yeah, tell yeah. me a joke. Maybe we'll give you a discount. No, he goes, since you guys are comics, I gave you the best rate I can give you. Yeah, they basically oh, nice. the non-weather pre-scheduled rate. Yeah. So just totally fair, more than fair. They could have been gouging people 200 bucks a pull on a oh, day like absolutely. that. absolutely. And just totally fair. Guy was completely awesome. You're at awesome. their mercy pretty much pretty in much. that kind of situation. And, and the thing was, though, when someone comes through that huge, you know, it was like, just keep it, man. He's like, I don't have any change. It was yeah. just, just keep it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and he was just awesome. So it, was, uh, it, was, it couldn't have gone any better. No damage to the vehicle? Literally a one-inch scratch, wow, a nice. one-inch scratch, and mm-hmm. uh, so just beyond. Couldn't, like I say, couldn't have come up any better. 
and uh, and he was awesome. And uh, the only little hitch in the whole thing was as he just started pulling us out, he had his wheels over the edge uh, off the shoulder a little bit, yeah, just to start the angle a little bit better. And uh, the weight of my vehicle actually started pulling him down. So as these as it's uh, reeling up on the tow thing. I'm not coming out, but his truck is pulling oh, wow. down the hill, so he had to adjust and pull me free a little bit because I had so much snow packed in around me from yeah. the hit. So, uh, but uh, it was quite impressive and uh, could not have gone any better and could not have been any uh, any more helpful. So, uh, so we got in uh, we got in in time to do the uh, dangerously strong open mic at yeah, rounding on. third last night. We rolled in there. Uh, knocked off a couple of good sets along with uh, with uh, Miguel Rivera showed up. Uh, really? Awesome to see Miguel Rivera. Yeah. And um, Hail Mary did a set, and Andy Bolton did some extended time. And just love when he reaches back a little bit and picks up, you know, does some jokes from, you yeah. know, probably a year and a half, two years ago. It's so much fun to hear him pull some of his older stuff back up. Uh, we did see Sean Cundy and his new bride, Crescent Cundy, formerly Crescent Parker, now Crescent Cundy. Oh, okay. And uh, they were in town. Sean did not go up. He's just kind of started the uh, opening the stand-up notebook again. So, Good. unfortunately, Sean didn't do any time. But we did have a great time uh, talking with him and uh, hanging out after the show. So, um, so the uh, uh, so that was kind of what uh, kind of what went down and and what was happening. So um, it was a good it was a great uh, it was a great little way to to wrap up a, a weird weekend. Cool. of uh, doing comedy under uh, extreme stressful pressure to get there and mm -hmm. and then doing uh, our second week of comedy with a, a headliner that was. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two in a row, baby. Two, two in a row. row. Yeah. Uh, using some older material. And uh, if anybody hears this and knows Jeff LaFleur, please ask Jeff LaFleur why he chose not to go to Barriga, Michigan this weekend <laughs> and why we had to fill in for him. I think we know the answer to that. But uh, but uh, it was great. It was a great setup. It was a great fun time. And we had a great time. And everything was cool. So, um, so uh, I'm going to bring him in just a hair early here. Uh, right. Joining us on the phone all the way from uh, Sock Rapids, uh, slash St. Cloud, Minnesota, uh, the host of our show at Benton Station in Sauk Rapids. It's uh, it's Aaron Imholt. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how are you guys? We're just loving life down here, man. Uh, what uh, what's happening? I, I, we were watching the weather today. Uh, not only did you get pounded with a bunch of snow, but uh, it's like uh, it's glass cutting cold weather up there now. <laughs> This is dribble. I'm actually calling you guys on the road. It's actually, I didn't expect to be, but just everybody's driving so incredibly slow. I, I'm driving past an elephant graveyard of vehicles. I, I just shouldn't wow. be here. I mean, it's just, <laughs> all these guys, it's just, I shouldn't be on the road. It's like, And they're all spun around other ways, so their headlights are facing you, almost as if to tell you, dude, there's, you don't have to do this. <laughs> it's just, it's all, it's all a bunch of cars just spun out in the ditch, hopeless people sitting on their hoods. It's, it's ridiculous. I so if, if my phone cuts out, uh, the phone didn't die. I did. <laughs> nice. Hey, uh, are any of them? Do you think pulled over because of the uh, minus seven degree wind chill factor that you're experiencing right now? Uh, either way, yeah, you're, yeah. The engine either, either completely froze, like that scene in the day after tomorrow, where the helicopters <laughs> yeah. crashed, yeah. or, or yeah, or they just spun out because the roads are all ice. I'm like 20 miles into my drive. I'm actually meeting some people for dinner in Big Lake, which was a mistake. But I, I 30 minutes into my drive, I finally see a sign that says, "Caution, roads icy." Hey, thanks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They finally got on it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's. Uh, I, I'm. 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 I'm very sorry that the weather has uh, has uh, entered into your life in such an extreme way. Because last winter, I don't know if you guys experienced the same thing up in uh, up in the upper Minnesota reaches, but we didn't really have winter last no. year. Uh, oh, it was beautiful. I loved that. That was in, that was great. Why? Can't... I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to burn as many fossil fuels as I can at this point just to get that back. Absolutely. I, uh, I actually went on a, uh, on a, uh, um, baby seal clubbing expedition wow. just to, uh, just to give my support of the warm winter. I just thought that. Oh my. 
Really You're doing God's myself. work. Thank you very much. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I unfortunately, it didn't really pay off. I bought a lot of aerosol cans just to uh, yes. help the process, too. <laughs> all right. I went back to 1980s and bought all the hairnet uh, big can. Air. Big aquanet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's Nate Ford joining us here, Aaron. Also with us is uh, Jason Evans from MKE Funny. Uh, it's one of the most fabulous websites dedicated to comedy uh, in the country. It focuses, obviously, here on Milwaukee, but uh, Jason runs an amazing website here. So, Jason, on with us he's one of my regular hosts here on the show how's it going Aaron no you got this is great I love this I listened uh, to your show the other week uh, when you were done when you when you told me about it from the show at Benton this is fantastic comics doing podcasts and radio this this is what needs to happen to this business because it is dreadful right now we need more creative people i'm in it no i'm in the business and it just sucks it's you guys well you you and nate uh brendan you guys were at the show on saturday and i had i had to go up and do my 15 minutes and prove that i could actually write a joke because in your guys mind you were a radio guy and you went oh shit uh, I just want, we I just want to said that that was actually Nate Ford's disposition. That was not my disposition. <laughs> that, it, was, it was totally my disposition. Yes. <laughs> I was totally. Uh, but to support his uh, to support his hypothesis, we did a show in Winnicani, Wisconsin, a uh, little tiny town in the middle of nowhere up by Oshkosh by Lake Winnebago. And it was hosted by a morning crew, a husband and wife team from the biggest uh, country station uh. in the valley. They've been on the air for 19 years, and they botched three people's introductions. They, Uh. they, they, without the script in front of them, they were absolutely lost. So it's like, well, if you're, if you can't come out from behind the, the console and actually you know, experience a crowd, you're really not actually a performer. You're more just like a news reader reading off a teleprompter. And uh, yeah, it, it yeah. was it was really quite it was it was quite a, a, a revealing uh, how little talent certain people bring to that position. I'm not saying that it that uh, obviously a competent, talented DJ is a very talented person. It brings a lot to the table. These people did yeah. not. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, they're the same people that when a comic goes in to do an interview, they just watch one of the bits they do on YouTube. Like, it's about, um, I don't know, it's called My Girlfriend's Dog. And they'll come in, and instead of having actual dialogue with the comics like we're doing, they go, Oh, so nice, I hear your girlfriend's got a dog. That's got to be crazy. Tell us about that. Yeah. uh, (laughs) They're brutal. They're terrible. And they just... They get, they get their jobs for like 20 years because no, they're so nice, nobody has the heart in management to tell them they suck. Well... Wow, that's I really you know that obviously never is the case here in Milwaukee. They're happy to tell everybody they suck with great frequency. Oh, yeah. uh, that's what they use as a common <laughs> negotiating tactic. By the way, you <laughs> suck. You lost an Arbitron point, and for that, we're going to cut your salary by five thousand uh, uh, dollars. Well, well, I gotta, is, I gotta say. I gotta say, you, you and Nate, uh, you guys did a great job up in Sock Rapids. We had another, we had another great show on uh, Saturday. We had uh, Randy Chestnut was headlining, and uh, he did, he did a great job as well. Just, uh, you know, we learned a little while here with a few good shows right in a row with good crowds. That's terrific. Well, we just wanted to say that the the set we were talking about it before you got on the phone with us here. That uh, what you brought that night and what you seem to bring every week because you really put yourself under that gun of writing for the week and. That's a hard thing to do. We we all it's know amazing. that ex- uh, completely. It's something we experience regularly. But uh, we were just talking about how about 90% of what you did was based on stuff that had happened in the last 24 hours. But more importantly, it was funny. It was good. It was yeah. really good. That's, the, well, yeah, that's the tougher thing. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of that has to do with doing a five-hour radio talk show every day, like I told you. It kind of just yeah. provides you a template to work off of. It's kind of just paving the road. But there will be, you know, I have a rule. It's kind of a rule of three. If a bit's hitting and it's not too time-sensitive, I'll use it three shows in a row playing at the same place every week. And then after that, I'll kind of fine-tune it to the point where I can kind of put it back in the quiver and then say, all right, when I go somewhere else, I can use this. This is good, but I can't use it here anymore because of the crossover audience. So it kind of it helps you develop the material, get it ready, and then by the time you're ready to part with it, you realize, is this something that I can keep or is this something that just isn't going to work? 
Well, it's, uh, that's a far more measured approach to, uh, <laughs> to your writing uh, ethos than most comedians would ever bring. So that's amazing. that probably is what will keep you out of being a comedian ever. I mean, we talked a little bit about that up at the show. <laughs> oh, are you, you, the, one of the comedians that was there, she was actually uh, uh, the uh, fiancé of the headliner, uh, said, yeah. um, so you're, just, so you're just, just using this to get into comedy? Like, like, are you in radio to get into comedy? What? And, and you're right, and Aaron's a dedicated radio personality is really driving that ship. And, and she didn't even, it didn't even register with her. Oh, that was so amazing. Yeah, it was weird because then I was like, well, you know, I'd really like to, to do a lot more stand-up and all that. And I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm being, because I love both of them, and you can't obviously uh, do both 40 hours a week. So she decides to just completely crap on all that and goes, oh, just take what you make in radio and cut it by two-thirds, and then that's what you'll make uh, doing comedy. I was like, well, why didn't she just tell me I'm going to keep doing radio? No, what she meant to say there was is if you suck as bad as I do, then uh, that's what you'll make. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I got you know I Would feel like bad because out loud? <laughs> you did. Yeah, I, I, I feel bad because I give my stuff three weeks and then I put it away. And apparently, our headliner two weeks ago, he just lets it sit for about a decade and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little on we the have, plus side of that. Have, yeah. Oh, and speaking we of had uh, Ross, we had Ross Perot jokes. I haven't heard a guy who said can't finish since Dana Carvey was relevant. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. You, you haven't seen nothing yet, all right? Uh, we uh, we did a show in Bararaga, Michigan, and uh, it was at a casino uh, Christmas party for the government employees of Baraga, Michigan, Upper Michigan, and the headliner was uh, Mick Lazinski. I don't know if you've uh, uh, heard of him or not. Uh, <laughs> Big uh, Ford, naming names. But, yeah. uh, you know, normally, names. normally a funny guy. Normally a funny guy. But that night, uh, I guess he just he he ended with the arms bit, the vaudeville, uh, bring an audience up and. Yeah, you bring an audience member up. You stand there. You put your arms behind your back, and they reach through the space in your elbows. There. Are you kidding? And they put their arms through, and their hands react to what you say. <laughs> Are you getting that view of, the, of that of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm with you. Okay, so that's that's probably one of the oldest it, bits yeah. that almost known to comedy. Vaud vaudeville actors yeah. call that hat. Oh, Literally <laughs> early 1900s kind of a thing, and uh, but, really? but but he did bring this to a whole new level. It was actually brilliant. He he did a Jack Nicholson impression. Well, uh, not with the thing. <laughs> no, not with that. Well, after yeah. after this. Oh. Yeah. So he, he closed he, on a Jack Nicholson impression, which was a street joke. So not only it was a street joke plus an impression of Jack Nicholson all in one little ball. What a closer. <laughs> yeah, it was quite powerful. Uh, the uh, the audience was somewhat nonplussed. They did love the hands bit, though. I will say they love seeing uh, their friend, their uh, the uh, Lisa from the tribe. Uh, they, they, she's apparently a fairly popular person, and they loved her seeing her hands come through his body and and stand there and react when he was trying to get her to in some way reach her crotch and uh and uh, reach his crotch i mean yeah. and uh and she wouldn't do it so uh the crowd was waiting in great baited anticipation and it never happened so oh man that's too bad yeah you, you, you hate it when your uh closing bit which is borderline sexual assault doesn't go anywhere you hate that. Exactly. <laughs> oh. very rough when that happens exactly so yeah well nobody nobody had a better line uh, the other Saturday than Nate did. <laughs> Nate did. God, I wish I could remember the joke. I think it was a, a poop joke. I can't remember. But he goes, he gets the crowd doubling over, and he kind of the reveal of the whole bit was, and that was a callback to a joke I didn't even do. I didn't even do, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's part of his uh, very famous red cheek rant. And uh, and it just, it, it's, it, it, it's really, it, it's probably uh it's probably very telling of com of comedians in general of the ego that they generally walk yeah, around yeah. with is that you do have moments on stage where you get to literally reference and and call yourself brilliant uh yeah. and nate ford has never shied away from doing no. that he is very regularly willing to call himself and the brilliant. thing is that was actually a mistake i did a long time ago where i was I meant to do the joke, and I never did the joke. And as I was, I was mentioning the callback. I realized, oh crap! 
I didn't do that joke. Uh, so I got to say something. <laughs> and so it just, it kind of stuck. And so I, I've never have done that joke yet. And uh, just... Well, it's, it. it's always just been a huge laugh line, too. So yeah, it's yeah. just it's so perfectly established at that point in the set yeah. that you can get away with that. It's a, it's a, it is. It's quite a I will. I don't know if it's level of genius, but it certainly is brilliance. And uh, uh, and it does work in that fashion. And, and that's just it. Those people got a great show. Um, and, and I don't even feel bad for the headliner that they had to sit through because uh, because I felt like the, the front three really brought uh, a, a show that was worth seeing. Yeah, and you know, I, and you got a little different taste of everything because I feel like Nate's approach and mine is so different. Nate gets up there and you said, "Hey, he doesn't shy away from calling himself brilliant." Every time I get a laugh, just to kind of make sure my timing doesn't go to hell after that, I always have to say in my own head, "You're still a hack. You're still a hack. You're still a hack. You're still a hack." <laughs> wow, wow, did uh... and then just and then boom, I can go right into the next bit. It works great. That's tough. How long ago was it when your uncle touched you? What the hell? What's the <laughs> man? As a, as a, as an opener, though, it's interesting because the way you find out if you did well or not is when you come off stage after the feature gets up. Is if the headliner will make eye contact with you, you did okay. <laughs> if he won't even look at you when you get off stage, you're like, all right, so we don't keep most of that stuff for the next weekend. Yeah, that's probably fairly safe. But that headliner that we had that night, he wouldn't make eye contact with any of us. Uh, and especially, yeah, actually, you know what? That makes me feel good, though, because I got a thumbs up. I was very happy about that. Oh, well, but good after job. I saw his act, I, after I saw his act, I went, oh, uh, 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 well, okay. No, I think oh, I watched him as Nate was coming off. And, and even in, like, the last two, three minutes of Nate's set, that guy knew that he was going to have to work so hard that night, and obviously he didn't. That was as much of a phoning it in as I've seen in a long time. Uh, he just he knew the bar had been set so high, and it, it, the, the setup could not have been more perfect. You got him up and going. I moved him up a level, and then Nate just took him off to a point where they were never expecting to go. This guy's job was going to be so hard to take them even further, and I just think he knew before he even took the stage that he was not going to be able to do anything with them. So he was just resigned in the first three to four minutes that he just wasn't going to go anywhere. So, Are you saying that um, Monica Lewinsky material is a sign of not really trying in 2012? <laughs> yeah, you know, there, there are certain clues you can look for in, uh, in your analysis and assessment of various performances. And, and yeah, the, uh, hey, uh, the, the, you remember, uh, oh, what was he talking about in the 80s? Some dances or music. Oh, he did some Michael Jackson references mm -hmm. and, and, uh, Halen. He did. <laughs> I love the, but I love the fact that he, he got about 10 words into the Michael Jackson reference and then went, oh, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> like, he just remembered. <laughs> that guy's been dead for four years. And, yeah. and he, it was, he well, was 10 words in before he remembered that he was talking about a dead guy. It's, it's not in a script, script that he's dead. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, yeah, that hasn't yeah. been written in yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and then he, um, oh, I'm, I want to ask you guys this because you've, you're, you're, you've been doing this a lot longer than I have, and you're, you're just better. And uh, I, I did my podcast, and I talked about the, the show two weeks ago on my radio shows, and I felt, as a, as a comic, I felt really bad. I felt like it wasn't my place to critique his performance. I felt like it wasn't my place to criticize him, but the radio guy in me just got the better hold of me, and I did. I went, look, that's kind of lazy 16 years ago. I want to I get your guys' thoughts on how to tastefully kind of critique another comic's performance when it's so obvious and you have to address that this guy wasn't giving the audience what they paid for or wasn't giving 110. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really honestly say that we agonized over whether we should talk about that for a solid 90 seconds. Yeah. We really, <laughs> we really were thoughtful and careful. No, when somebody does something that, much of a phone in that's just they aren't just not even trying i mean quite frankly if i never work with with uh rob holloway ever again in my life i don't know maybe he's got a connection to somebody that's going to move me up you know we don't try to slam anybody but i really felt like like the three of us brought everything we could you know you you've experienced crowds there as small as under 30 people there was a really enthusiastic large crowd that night they wanted to laugh from the minute you took the stage they were enthusiastic you couldn't ask for more as a performer to be laid out in front of you a great group of people a great group of people setting up the room for you uh he just laid down it was just like well 
I don't really have to do anything because these they've laughed enough was the feeling yeah. I got. It was like he wasn't, but that's his show. That's that's what he does. So, you know, yeah. I, I'm not, I, I don't know how bad, you know, I feel like I've earned the right to say something after six years of doing this. Nate Ford's been doing this for 10 years. So there's certainly an element of you earn your stripes. I mean, I, I've had some awful shows, but I'm the first person to go, holy cow, I tanked that thing. That was terrible. Right. right. He was yeah. coming off never, that cock of the walk because people were coming up saying, hey, great show. And he's like, yeah, yeah. well, of course. Of course it was a great show. It was me. And I was like, dude, seriously, take <laughs> yeah. it down a notch. Wow, I, really? Yeah. I never thought I'd ever have to use the term a poor man's Joe Piscopo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, there you go. After watching him, I kind of, it's, I couldn't help but sneak it in there. If he would have done a Sinatra impression, I would have went, wow, this oh. guy really just hits the cycle. Full circle, baby. Brought it all the way around. That was awesome. Well, now, now if he, on the flip side of the things, if he was trying all his best that night, if he was working hard at it la- that night, he should quit. Not if he's still getting work. Why would you quit if you're still if if that if you can bring that to the stage and get paid, and you yeah. can have a life and you can get I mean because he wrote for some TV show or something. His bio said he wrote Mad, for some Mad TV. He wrote for Mad TV. Yeah, he did a couple episodes of Mad TV. I mean, if he could get gigs back in the day, whatever. Hey, I don't begrudge anybody the money they make. I'm, I'm not someone who slams Larry the Cable Guy for doing what he does, but I just feel like at some point. The rumors are going to catch up to him. It's like, oh, that guy, really? And it just hasn't. I mean, I don't know how somebody does that for 20 years and is just that, oh, my God, average. But at least Larry puts 110% in every show that he does. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and the weird thing was I used to host uh, – I hosted an open mic here in Milwaukee for a year, and it was a little different than the average open mic in that we gave seasoned performers 10 minutes of time. Not a lot of open mics give that. But we closed every show with a 20-minute with a – uh, what we called the super slot and we would have a featured performer uh someone who's out featuring on the road or a headliner would come in and do time and and work out some of their new stuff or they'd work out a larger longer chunk of material and it was a great format and a great forum to hear some really good performers and and i literally had this thought while because he's the the fiance is a gal here from milwaukee they're going to be in the area i literally had the thought of that's ah, too bad. I don't have my open mic out anymore. This could that could really help this guy. Yeah. You know, he could really use some open mic time and work out some new material. But he's a headliner for twenty years. How do you go up to a headliner and say, "Hey, man, you know, I got five minutes for you if you want to come work on some new stuff"? It just it was that bad. So wow. there are open micers in Milwaukee that are better. And he, and he told you, he said, oh, that's great. I could use the five minutes. I've got a new John Edward talks to Michael Jackson beyond the grave bit. That you're just <laughs> <gonna love. laughs> I've been waiting to bust that out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. So, Did you guys uh, hear about Sputnik? <laughs> so what time on the uh, on the interwebs can people hear your, uh, your radio broadcast there, Mr. Imholt? Oh. Let's throw out the plugs. We got 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. on uh, KLFD. That's just outside of St. Cloud. The website there is uh, KLFD1410.com. And then uh, I do a little setup to a nationally syndicated show, a little 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. talk show on Rockin' 101 in St. Cloud. And you can catch that one on rockin101.com. And then uh, I do a weekly podcast. Because of the blizzard, didn't get it up uh, yesterday. Hope to get that up by tonight. That's at uh, AaronImholtShow.com. Outstanding. Um, And does the uh, uh, KLFD, does that live stream also on their website? Yeah, at KLFD1410.com, absolutely. That is outstanding. Uh, well, Aaron Imholt, that was so awesome of you to hang out with us here this evening. We really appreciate you taking some time. Have you have you made it home yet? Have you managed to skate the highways this whole time? I have no idea. I have no idea where the hell I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just driving off into the I, into the darkness. I'm in a park. I, I saw <laughs> I saw a snowmobile in the ditch and a cop car there, and nobody was on the snowmobile. Uh, Dollars to donuts. That guy's dead. Wow. So uh, <laughs> I'm just this is not good. <laughs> Wow. Well, it, where where we were last night or two nights ago, uh, they actually in the UP of Michigan, uh, they suspend uh, regular driving regulations. You can actually drive snowmobiles on the public roadways oh, when there's more than 20 inches of snow. 
And they, that Damn. means they get 20 inches of snow so frequently that they had to create a rule change that allows you to drive your snowmobile on the streets. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's pretty special up there. So, But they had the same thing we did last year. They had almost no winter, and, uh, and uh, they all missed it. And I'm like, you're a bunch of idiots. I... That last winter was the evidence to move to Phoenix, if ever there was. Like, you mean we can have winter like that? I can mow in December? That's awesome. <laughs> so. Oh, absolutely. Well, I tell you what, guys, I, I know where I am now. I made it to Big Lake. I made it to my destination. I got to say, your guys' show is incredible. I listened to it last week. Uh, everything but the last 20 minutes of this week is going to be great. And uh, <laughs> you, uh, I got to get a little more. Nate Ford in me. That didn't come out right. Anyway, uh, what I meant to say was... <laughs> well, that's, you guys, all, that's all you would get is a very little bit of Nate Ford. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, an inf- like an inflation nub on a basketball. Exactly. But, uh, no, you guys are uh, fantastic, and uh, I'd love to do this again sometime, and you guys uh, you guys take it easy. Uh, and, and especially take it easy on, on Rob Holloway. I think that young kid could really do something here. <laughs> oh, okay. That's Aaron Take Imholt. Care of That's Aaron yeah. Imholt joining us from St. Cloud, Minnesota, and uh, and now in Big Bear, Big Bend, somewhere out in Minnesota. That was awesome. Uh, heck of a great guy. Just an amazing job that Sounds he great. did with us talented. for hosting. Yep. Yeah. yep, one of those guys you want to know, and uh, and someday you're going to hear Aaron Imholt. I think on XM, uh, he'll work his way up. Though he did slam uh, Clear Channel in a recent. Uh, in a All recent right. podcast, so he's not willing, he's not uh, unwilling to take on the uh, the big fish and and tell them what he thinks about how they're ruining radio because they are. Uh, and uh, I hate Mel Carmazan, so I believe him and back him 100. percent So, uh, but that was Aaron Impholt, great guy. Uh, great, yeah. yeah so he's, that's amazing how he can write like that. I tell you, I actually listened to his podcast uh, a couple days ago when we got back from, mm-hmm. and it had me laughing going throughout the whole show. Oh, yeah. Wow, and it's just him talking. Uh, I don't think he has anybody else on it. So, uh, sometimes he does, but yeah, it that's just, crazy. It's it's just very funny and informative as well. Yep. So that's and that's what you want is you want sharp, smart people on radio, not husband and wife couples that are nice, so they get to stay on the radio for way too long. So that uh, that was pretty fabulous tonight. And uh, gosh dang, we uh, we're at uh, seven thirty-seven. Another. Uh, Another quick run by of the hour here. It's coming to a close. Uh, what's going on with the world of uh, Milwaukee comedy? Oh, tons, man. There's lots of stuff going, going on. on. Yeah, what's we got uh, the uh, anniversary of the Miramar Open Mic tomorrow night, mm-hmm. which is awesome. That's nine years, correct? If I'm right about that, I believe it's nine years it's been around. The Miramar Open Mic. It is nine years tomorrow yeah. night, exactly. The anniversary yes. pizza and everything. Going to be some pizza from Ian's Pizza. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, Sandy brings in the good stuff. Doesn't oh, just go across the street and grab a that couple doesn't surprise little sleezers. Me. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time tomorrow night. And so. I heard they're putting everyone up, so she's going to put everyone up. Uh, if you're coming in late even. Oh, cool. Well, up, I so. guess I won't host tomorrow night then because <laughs> we got to leave at 6 in the morning. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's going to be a, a long day tomorrow and long day Wednesday. We're driving all the way to uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota, through that uh, snowstorm and, and cool. through the uh, – uh, I guess the temperature is supposed to rise to around 16 tomorrow mm-hmm. as the daytime high. Today's daytime high in St. Cloud was 7. Oh, jeez. And, uh, and wind chill was, I guess it was 8, and wind chill was minus 7. Yeah. Is that coming this way? Uh, no, that's going to just oh, co- cut across the top and be gone. We're not going to even get cold here. Oh, I see. Uh, so, but they'll be up in the uh, low 20s on, mm-hmm. on, um, phew, on uh, what do you call it, on Wednesday? So we'll be driving up in twenties, and uh, it'll be cold, but it'll be all right. It's not gonna cool. be deathly. So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, um, uh, no. So that's coming up on Tuesday. Yeah, on Tuesday, and then uh, Tom Clark's coming into town on Wednesday for the uh, open mic under the stairs. Yeah. Show slash open mic. Yeah. The holiday so, package show. Yeah, yeah, Tom Clark, yeah. which is always a great time to go yeah, see. Yeah, you should go to see Tom Clark. Absolutely. Tom Clark's pretty He's awesome. He's amazing, amazing uh, guy. I think it's unfortunate that you have to pay to see him, uh, pay five bucks to see him at an open mic, because if you'd have seen him at the uh, Wednesday night open mic at stage right inside the Miramar, of course, you got to see him for 25 minutes for no charge. Of and course. Tom Clark's a heck of a guy. He decided to come do our open mic, and he was just amazing. That guy just blew that room apart. And you can always it. check MKE Funny for his interview, which was done at the safe house which is awesome interview absolutely stellar interview by and our then, own jason evans and, yeah and then uh john witherspoon's at jokers uh this weekend oh wow comedy yeah. legend john witherspoon yeah. absolutely yeah, movies like friday boomerang yeah. 
Yeah, everything. Yeah, Going back to the 80s and early yeah, and late he's, 70s. He's yeah, amazing. Guy's been in everything. So that'll be a blast, and there's just tons of stuff going on. Go over to MKE Funny and check it all out. Check all that out over there. Second City is also in the city uh, doing a show. I'm not sure where. It's on my front page. But they're doing like uh, three weeks of shows this month or two weeks of shows this month. Um, their holiday special, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. I'd like to go check that out. Mm-hmm, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. A lot of stuff on MKE Funny, a lot of stuff going on. Add stuff, uh, added two extra things yesterday. Nice. And uh, just constantly adding to the calendar, so you got to check it out. That's become my standard answer when somebody either text messages me or, I or Facebook that. messages. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, or I see a post on, on Facebook, someone will put up just, is there an open mic tonight? <laughs> And I'll and I it's like it's like people are just unaware people in the scene people in yeah, the universe yeah. of especially this they, especially if they live here and do comedy here yeah, right yeah. there's no excuse and uh, and one of them was one of our own radio co-hosts uh, Mr. Uh, Jeff Lampton yeah uh, I actually up... I actually saw him Thursday I went down to Chicago to okay. see him and Russ uh, at the oh, Abbey yeah. they were doing an open mic Flabby down at there the Abbey, like, yeah the TV I gotta, one yeah. I gotta get out of town you know sure. and I went down there and. Uh, yeah, he was actually wearing my shirt too, which you know the sweatshirt <laughs> I gave him, and that was the it day after. with yeah. mkefunny.com. And that was right the day it. after. Uh, was it nice? Where, where, you know that he asked, "Is there a Thursday?" Well, there's a like? fairly popular internet meme uh, that says the answer to everything is to, to the question why is because race car, and and this was popular, more popular several years ago. But I'm a race car guy, so it, it just became it's it's something I will just if someone asks a question with such an obvious answer the only thing to say is because race car and do i look fat yeah you know because <laughs> race car exactly and that's just it and so he he puts the hey is there an open anybody got an open mic tonight and it's just like because race car and i i put the web link to, yeah, to mk that. funny and and i get i i i do that probably twice a week well, i thanks, see man. that people just it's like people so here it is people please mkefunny.com 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 is your source for all local and statewide comedy information if it's out there jason evans scrounges it up and if you have information call him yep. text him message him he will get it facebook he him. will get it yes. up on the site and uh, and get your information out there for you uh, and what you don't realize is there's 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 hundreds of unique views every month on his webpage. You're missing out if you're not going there. If you're not sending your information to him, you're missing out on the audience that he has generated that come to that site yeah. and see it as their source for comedy in southeastern Wisconsin and in Wisconsin in general. So yeah, our calendar has the most hits out of any other page that I have. Absolutely, uh, and uh, people, people want to know. Them. Yeah, and uh, like I said, it, it is the most uh, complete calendar. For comedy in Milwaukee, hands down, there is no other source uh, that says it uh, sends or whatever. I don't even know what word I want, but as much comedy as is in the city is on that site. So it's awesome. Uh, I we were there, we were there all week last week trying to figure out all where right. we wanted to go, what shows we wanted to go see yeah. while we were in town, and uh, so it's just it's I, it's invaluable for me, mm-hmm. and that's why. It's one of those weird things. When you're not here all the time, suddenly, you know, you find yourself somewhere else and you realize there's nobody covering this stuff like you. Yeah. So well, I appreciate that. Well, that's why I brought up that idea. You got to have a, a CHI dot, you know, yeah. funny dot com. You got to have an uh, NMN, whatever, MPL dot com. You got to have a one for every major city because there's A, there's good comics in every city and B, Everybody needs to know what's going on, and and I think this could be an empire. I really think this I, I would be something that could I would drive hope so sometime. Um, and I, it's funny because when comics come in from uh, other parts of the states, I know it. Like uh, Tom Clark's coming in Wednesday, and I'm getting hits uh, from California all of a sudden. So right. he's checking yep. the calendar to see what's going on. He's checking the calendar around to the know city what when he blows into go. town. Right? Yeah, because he's going to be here a long time. You figure if he's coming in and doing a show now, this is he's doing the show on what the. 13th or 14th yeah. or whatever yeah. it is uh he's gonna be here all through christmas yeah well he said this is the last show he's doing in the city till the end of the world so <laughs> there you go but i mean tom clark's gonna be around so yeah. if yeah. if you're if you're a comic in milwaukee and you're not going to all the open mics that are available to you in milwaukee over the next three weeks 
you're probably going to miss seeing Tom Clark at yeah. a few places. Oh, he's yeah. going to show up. He's going to just go up and do time. Or he's going to hang out, and you could be talking to Tom Clark, tapping his brain, yeah. uh, you know, Amazing. just, just uh, Amazing you know, taking resource. an opportunity to, to talk to a guy who does this and came right out of your own city. I think you're missing the boat. And and the way the place you find the information of where that is is that's, that's right on mkefunny.com. So go there, get there, and be there, and you'll know what you're doing. So... That's what I got. That's what I got to say on that. Thank mm-hmm. you, sir. I appreciate there you that. Go. Anyway, tolls are expensive in Chicago. Oh my tolls gosh, are. man! Yes, they are. I went down there. I had like ten bucks in my pocket or whatever, and that's all I had for the whole trip. And uh, I couldn't believe how expensive tolls are. They're like two eighty at the border, which was a lot for me. I was like, coming Holy back in, cow. right? Bo- or both, oh, ways. both ways? Both oh, ways, man. And then yeah. it was like 180 at the second one. Yeah. yeah. I was ridiculous. like, jeez, this is expensive, and now i got to pay for parking. If you, if you go through uh, Illinois, Indiana, um, to anywhere else, you're going to spend about just 20 bucks. Unreal. Yeah, to cross a, a corner of the state yeah. where 8 million people live. <sighs> There's four and a half million people in the entire state of Wisconsin, yeah. and they can't build roads with the tax base and the high levels of income that they have yeah. in the in the greater Chicago area to you know housing their own people. Or, or it just it, it just boggles well, my look, mind. I, I wouldn't mind if if the tolls uh, tollways come from uh, the the cities there, in Illinois, but a company outside of the United States bought them all. The, uh, owned oh. by them, and now we're, now they're paying this company. Uh, yeah, it. it's it's ridiculous. Well, that you know, actually, that's and that's really fabulous because, all right, it's one thing to ship the manufacture of your cell phone overseas, where a twelve-year-old Chinese kid can build it for you for you know two dollars a day. Yeah. I get it. That that there's 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 actual economic benefit behind that. If you had, uh, if you had 30 year old guys in Mission Viejo, California, building iPhones, they'd be three thousand dollars a piece. Yeah. So we understand that if you want to get an iPhone for four hundred bucks, it's got to be done that way. That's just that's the economics of the situation. But uh, there's no reason for the company that owns the toll road. The work has to be done here. You can't outsource the work yeah. of the toll roads. So all you did was outsource the ownership of the toll roads. So all the profitability from the exorbitant toll fees now goes overseas. It doesn't even stay here. That's the best part of all of it. And just and there's nothing to, to cease. There's no way to put a cease to stop it that. It was just all. ridiculous that I went down there and I roughly had to spend $8 on tolls just to get it back there you and go. forth. Yeah, that's awesome. To an open, it was unbelievable to me. The only that's toll I, I agree with is the Mackinac Bridge. That's the only toll I agree. <laughs> yes, I will spend seven, ten bucks just to go over that huge bridge. Yeah. And maybe my car might fly off. That's that's <laughs> right? the that's the benefit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. A, a Hugo fell off or uh, flew blew off and blew off the bridge into the uh, a water below. Right. Uh, so that's okay. That's I'll pay to see that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For Twelve sure. bucks with a chance to see that happen. Look, uh, those winds that were blowing across there just last night. I would love to have seen you know like a half loaded semi, you know, spending <laughs> most of his way on four wheels and yeah. and you know just hanging out sideways. That'd be cool. So so Illinois, why don't you get together with uh, people who made the bum fight videos and uh, have some bum fights <laughs> as you're going bridge. through Illinois. There you that go. way you're paying for a little show. Like it, I would love to see. Some bums stabbing each other just to pay for the. Yeah. You know what? The toll people need to like uh, handles the homeless problem in the same class. The, the uh, toll people need to buck up a little bit too, because I, I met four of them, and well, I only had pleasant. one pleasant one. I only had one pleasant one. And look, I know you're watching TV or doing whatever you're doing in the booth. I don't even want to know, but at least say. Thank you, or something, as I'm handing you my money. It was, was just something. All I ask is a thank you. No, some of them not a even smile. a word. Yeah, just that. That's fine. I could do that. I was going through a toll one time, and we're going to have to wrap this up here real quick. Yeah. Like, but uh, uh, they were down to one booth in the in the cash lanes, and so the line going back was just, it was a mile long. So, because I'm basically stopped out on the freeway, I'm trying to do a little bit of internet searching and, and trying to uh, trying to update my map for where I'm heading and to see what's going on. And I notice when I when I activate a web page, uh, it tries to log on to a an internet site and onto a Wi-Fi spot. For the toll booth, they actually have Wi-Fi in their booth. Oh, I'm sure they do. 
Somebody brought him Wi-Fi. Nice. Oh, that's well, so you awesome. Got to. Gotta have that. Such so. a hard job. There you go. All right, everybody. That was the Extemper Radio Show for uh, whatever it is, for December eleventh uh, of uh, the year twenty twelve. It was nice knowing you all. Uh, world will be ending in another eleven days. So I uh, hope you all have a great uh, ten days. I guess I hope you all have a great rest of your lives. And uh, we will see you on the dark side. But, Happy holidays, uh, everybody. Have a nice one, everybody. Good day.